With our soft jaws made in program, we're now going to take a first look at the first setup that we're going to run on the actual bracket itself. So if we look at the vise and how it's going to set, we actually want to machine off this side, and then we want to do some machining on the inside of the pocket to actually capture the inside wall. So here you can see we have the inside wall here. But we're going to do a little bit of a custom profile because we want to keep a little bit of rigidity in the back as we machine this, which I'll explain here in a little bit. So as you know from before, we created a configuration showing where this part was set. Now we're going to jump over to Solder's Cam. We have a new configuration set just like you saw in the back jaw and the soft jaw. And we're going to select our part to machine. And for stock this time, you can see that it automatically creates a bounding box around the part. Well, that's not actually how our stock is going to sit in our part. So we're going to create a custom stock and we're going to use a sketch. We'll pick that profile. And if you remember right, we have a piece of material in the shop that's two and a half inches thick, right? So we're gonna make that thickness two and a half, and this is actually how our part is gonna look and be machined from the process. And again, we'll use 6061 for the material. We'll go to the machine setup, and we wanna use our Kenna Metal tool selection. We only wanna pull from the tool crib. And then we'll select our Matsura post-processor. For our coordinate system, we'll match what we did before. So we'll come in here, we'll select that corner. So we'll select here. That sets our XYZ in the right location. And now we're going to come in and we're going to create a mill part setup. And again, we could run this through feature recognition for for this example here, we're going to use this angle and we want to put at the top of the part, right? So that way our Z is going in the correct direction. You could use any of these reference planes as well. You can use assembly reference planes, you can use part reference planes. Uh, for our example, we should be okay with that. So we'll go ahead and do our setup. And then we're going to add a two and a half axis feature. Now, I could do a corner slot and automatically pick the outside as I have a loop here. I do have the ability to actually come back and use assembly sketches, part sketches, uh, whatever profile that I want to use. So to give you guys an idea of how that works, we'll just come in here and we'll create a plane. Just so that way for visual aid, it's a little bit easier to see. So to give you guys an idea of how we can actually work with sketches, we now have our sketch one. So we'll just do top of setup one. We can create a sketch, look normal to the part or the assembly. And if we look here, you can see that we actually want to just machine in an area like this. So we'll grab our corner rectangle And now we can come back with our mill part setup. We could do a two and a half axis feature with a corner slot. If I go to assembly sketches, you can see that I have different sketches here I could use. Let's use that one. For end condition, we want to, let's machine to that point. Let's just see if that's far enough down. We can always come back and look. For ours, we'll do rough and finish for this cycle. We'll come back and do a finish pass on the face. We could do a rough of uh, zero if you wanted to, just like we did before in the soft jaws. It depends upon the finish you're looking for and, and um, what you're okay with. Some people will just do roughing to zero for this type of part because it's more of a mounting face. If you want that extra nice finish profile, you can do a rough and a finish. So we have rough finish here. So we'll generate the operation plan. And now we have a rough and a finish with 3 8 end mill. 
So let's just see what it looks like when we do that. So now we have a roughing pass and we have a finish pass. If we come in here and we'll go to our setup for fixtures, we'll just make sure we add our, our soft jaws on the top face just for reference. Uh, one thing I didn't mention in the previous ones, if I want to do a work coordinate offset, I can set it to G54 right here, and that'll output the G54 in my program. If I had multiple parts, it would automatically do 54, 55, 56, 57. So it automatically picks the number of parts that you're running, and then you can assign it here automatically. So it, it's actually a pretty cool setup that you have. Um, so let's take, let's look at the simulated toolpath, and let's just see what we end up with here. Now one thing to note in here too is as I'm grabbing this tool because I have Kenna Metal, I already have my predefined protrusion length set up because this is my tool care from before and this is the actual holder that I have so I can see where my holder and my protrusion is going to collide. Um, this is all mimicked from what's in my machine currently. So I'm using the reference of what's previously set up to automatically verify here so I know if I need to make changes in how my tools are set in my standard pockets. And just for clarification, let's make this translucent and let's turn on our shaded part so I can see if I'm actually machining past my part or not. So you can see now I'm finished my finish and my rough, but when I look at my part, you can see that based upon where I drew that sketch, it's automatically only containing inside, right? So I'm actually missing this endpoint of my part. So what I need to do is I need to either make a change to my sketch and move it out a little bit to compensate. And if you remember right, we had it tied to the corner. So we'll remove the corner. And we'll put this we're using a 3 8 end mill, so we'll do 7 16 past. I could make it go all the way to my soft jaw if I wanted to. Um, you can see we have a little bit of clearance in our part. So we'll take this corner, make an adjustment to our sketch. So we'll do those two. Just add some basic SolidWorks uh, dimensions and reference geometry here. Okay. We'll rebuild it, and now you can see my tool paths go past where I want them to be. Now, likewise, one other thing to note in here is I have it set to be a pocket. I could just do offset roughing here and keep those as a corner slot if I wanted to. So to give you guys an idea of how we would do that, because maybe that's a little bit more of an efficient tool path that we want. So we'll come back in here, we'll select our sketch, and we'll turn this to We'll just do construction. Rebuild it. It's going to ask to update. We'll hit OK. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this feature. And we'll just start all over. So we'll do two and a half axis feature just to give you guys an idea of how that works. We'll select our geometry here. And as we select the geometry, you'll notice it gives us a gradient just like you would expect in SOLIDWORKS. So for our end condition, we'll do rough finish. We'll pick the same bottom point that we had before. And you can see now I have a dashed line on this side. This lets me know that this is open air. So the tool will go up next to the solid lines and then go past the construction lines. Just like you would expect when you draw sketches in SOLIDWORKS, construction lines are for reference. The solid lines are the object lines actually do what we want to do. So we'll hit OK. Now we'll generate this, and we'll generate this toolpath, and now let's see what we get. So now you can see I get offset roughing to machine that shape or that profile, and then I get my finish passes as well. So now if I come back and we look at the 3 8 we'll change our feeds and speeds to the tool. For here, we're going to come down and we'll make this a little bit deeper. So let's say we make it a quarter inch on the first, 
quarter inch on the last. We'll leave allowance of 10 thousandths for cleanup. We'll hit okay. And then for our cleanup pass, we'll do the same thing. We'll go to our tool, we'll change it to our tool speed. Then we'll go 0 0.250, 0 0.250. If I want to do more side allowance here, I could do that and do okay. And now if we simulate the tool path, we should be able to come back and clean it up. Now I can continue to adjust my sketch to make it a little bit tighter to the edge of the part. So if we came back here and let's say we change this sketch because right now we have it at two inch. Let's say we make that 1.5. We now have a smaller window that we can go ahead and look at when we look at the generated tool path here. So now if I come back and I simulate this, and I continue to edit this for my start and finish, I could do my step overs a little bit greater because we're only gonna be taking a piece of the section as we go. Um, we can rough this out. We can make it just a few passes if we want to do that. So we can continue to make adjustments to streamline the tool path. If you're not concerned about the extra passes and you want to make sure that everything is right, or maybe you didn't cut the block perfectly square and you had a taper, you may want the extra tool path, but we can continue to go through and refine this to make it a little bit tighter to what we want to machine. The goal here is, is that when we're done, we're actually machining the entire face of that part. So now we're coming through and finishing. You can see over here on the left, we're in our contour mill or finish pass. And we've now machined that face at our 20 degree angle. So our next step in this process is we actually wanna come back and we wanna machine this back face, right? Because it's still at a 20 degree angle as well. And we need, a, we need our fasteners to actually mount perpendicular. So I'm gonna go ahead and start a sketch on the top of this part. Just like before. And when we look at this part here and we look at this shape, I want to machine this inside wall and this fillet, but I don't want to machine all the way to the end because I, I'm clamping here. So I need some rigidity on the clamp, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use my SolidWorks tool set on this sketch and we'll just do a convert entity. Now I could pick these in SolidWorks cam as well, but just to, just because everyone's used to using SolidWorks, I'll show you the process we could do this. I could select this geometry inside of SolidWorks cam, which I'll show you guys a little bit later. So we'll come back and we'll just add a quick little sketch. And let's say we want to machine a two inch pocket. And we'll make this equal to that. And we'll just drag across to shape here, okay? We'll remove the equal. Okay, so we have a rough shape that we wanna machine out of our part, okay? Now in SolidWorks Cam, I could come back, I could pick these edges and then truncate it as well. For the sake of, of our process here, we'll just do this in the same way. This time I'm gonna do a pocket because I wanna machine everything on the inside. I can pick this sketch. For my end condition, we'll just run down to that depth because we can machine it all the way through and then we'll come back later and we'll clean up this shape here. Okay, this triangle shape, we'll clean up in a last operation when we actually machine the outside. That'll be the last little part that we make. So we'll go ahead, we'll do a rough finish. We'll generate the operation plan. And you can see I'm using the same three eighths again, right? which is okay. So we'll just come back for our example here. Go to tool, we'll leave 10. We'll do 0.25. And again, if these were my standards I use all the time, I would just save this once in my operation plan. And then next time I pull this up for this geometry, it would automatically have all the feeds and speeds and settings for me. Uh, this is more just showing you going through the process. So we'll take those two, generate the tool path. And now if we look at these and we simulate this,
We'll take a look at our protrusion length here to see if we run into a collision. Now, one of the things I can do is I can turn on holder collision. So it'll run down and it would let me know if there's a collision. So I can actually look at this part and determine how far down I could machine with this cutter. And as you can see, I would need to change my protrusion length to be correct because right now, if I look at the front of my part, I'm not machining deep enough to get all the way through the part. So if I change that to translucent, here's my tool path where I collide. And as we all know, we need to go down a little bit further. So if I, let's say I make my fixtures translucent, I want to machine all the way to this bottom edge, but I'm only about halfway through my part. So my protrusion needs to stick out further, or maybe I can't use this tool to do the roughing. Maybe I need to change the profile of what I'm running. So we'll go back. Let's say we look at this as a shaded display. As you can see, I'm not getting all the way to the bottom of the radius. The nice thing about this is I have plenty of interrogation tools I can look at here. So I can actually look and see where my finished part is versus where my stock is versus where my fixture is to see if there's any collision. So we need to make a change. We'll go to our 3 8 end mill. And as you can see in our holder, we have a protrusion length of two inches right now. Let's see what happens if I make that three. Hit OK. Now, one of the cool things too is I can run the traditional simulation as I've seen before, but I can also step through the tool path and I can look at all the tool paths and I can click and I can look at this and see where it is when it hits that tool. And as you can see, I'm still not long enough here. Now let's say if I look at this, you can see that my tool is not long enough to machine all the way to that depth. But do I really need to go all the way to that depth? And the answer is no. I only need to machine to this point here to clear that wall on this side, right? I can clean up the rest of that later on in my, in a, future process. So maybe what I need to do is I need to come back and make a geometry change. So instead of going to this point, maybe I want to go to that point for my depth. Because now I would be machining this entire fillet and then I could come back from a reachable angle and machine the rest of this here. I could go a little bit deeper if I wanted to. I could go down to like another midpoint or I could actually just put a number in here. So let's say I want to go to three inches deep. Hit OK. So now I have this geometry and now my tool paths have been updated to fit that as well. So let's take a look and see where we end up. If I step through here and I click to that point. Now three is going to touch where I'm sitting in my protrusion right now, right? So I can't do three with the tooling I have. Maybe the answer is I need a different tool, which that could be the case too. But let's say we make this 2.875. We come over here. We step through our tool path. Now you can see I'm going to run an eighth inch of clearance here. So this is the mix and match that we have. And this now tells me that I need to make sure my tool and my holder sticks out two and seven eighths. That way I can clear this when I do the machining, right? Likewise, when I come back here, I'm going to do a finish pass to that depth as well. So now I know I have clearance for the inside and the outside. So what do we look like if we go ahead and we simulate this? So we'll have the outside machined at our 20 degree angle, right? Because we have this machined at 20 degrees. We then have this machined at our 20 degrees. If we do a comparison of geometry from the SOLIDWORKS model to where we're at, you can see that we're finishing here. We have a little bit of material out here we may want to clean up or make an adjustment to. But this gives us the ability to go through and check where we want to machine. And in our first process here, I think this looks pretty good. Now, one of the questions that would come up is, do I need to pocket this out or can I do high-speed machining? With uh, Solver's Cam Pro, I can come down here and I could turn on volume mill. 
and I can run my step over. My first cut amount is 250. If I go to my feeds and speeds, I could set my max uh, machine rate. My machine does not run at 650 inches a minute. So let's say I set this at 100 inches a minute for non-cutting. And for plunging, let's say I want to do 75. So we'll change that. If I wanted to use their feeds and speeds, I could. Uh, for my tool here, I'm actually running um, the recommended ones from Kenametal. So we'll hit OK. And we now have our tool paths for volume mill. Now I have a spiral lead in. I can change this too. So I like to use ramp in mine. Um, I can also side mill, do sharp corners, any of these step overs, that's all fine. Um, I can set my max slot depth. So if I'm slot cutting, I can make my slot shallower than my regular cutting. So that keeps my pressure a little bit different so I don't break off the end mill. Now for 3 8 obviously I could do 375. Let everything run. Now my tool paths look a little bit different. I'm actually ramping in and creating that slot before I go and do that. So the choice is up to me on however I want to machine this um, and how I want to do the settings. But this looks pretty good for our first profile. So we're going to machine the 20 degree angle, then we're going to machine the side angle. Then we'll take the part out, we'll swap over for our so regular soft jaws, and we can start doing the rest of the machining on this on this part.